Hello friends. After a long time, I'm recording this presentation. Because of Corona epidemic, uh, I was a little bit away from uh, academics. So I, I haven't uploaded any presentation for a long time. So today I'm going to talk about basics of loss of resistance blocks. A question comes to our mind. Sometimes we don't have USG, we don't have PNS. Still, I want my patient pain-free in the post-operative period, or I want to give block to provide the analgesia to the patient. So how can I do it? Do, do I have any option? Answer is loss of resistant blocks. You can give it with a landmark guided technique or LOR blocks. Um, you can give many blocks with this technique and provide analgesia to the patient. So why we need LOR blocks? Because LOR blocks are very e easy and anybody can do it. So LOR blocks should be practiced by all anesthesiologists, even if you have ultrasound, because sometimes ultrasound is not working or PNS is not working. In those conditions, LOR blocks comes to your rescue. It's an era of facial pain blocks. There are many new emerging facial pain blocks in the uh, last 20 years or so. It started from tap block, uh, then we have rectus sheet block, uh, then we have PEX blocks, SAP block, uh, ESP block, and all those blocks. And all these blocks can be given with loss of resistance technique. If you understand the technique well, if you know the technique, and if you understand certain concept, these blocks are very easy and very successful. All facial planes are with some distinct pops, like just like epidural space. When you insert a blunt tip needle uh, in the, uh, through this facial plane, you will feel bounce and then certain distinct pop. So if you can feel this pop, you can if if you can distinguish this pop. You can easily deposit drug in right plane and you can have, a, uh, have an excellent analysis in the post-operative period. And believe me, uh, if you know the technique properly, in more than 90% of the time, your block will be successful. So which blocks we can give with LR technique? We can give a thoracic periodical block. It is a age-old technique. It, it, it is in practice for more than 100 years. And it is landmark guided technique and LOR technique, and it, it is uh, everybody knows uh, it well. But tap block was introduced in uh, beginning of twenty first century, century, and uh, it became popular after uh, ultrasound guided technique. But even with LOR technique, you can give uh, tap block very well. You can give rectus sheet block with LOR technique. You can give ESP. You can give PEX one, PEX two, SAP facial area compartment block. So you can provide analgesia for thoracic surgery, abdominal surgery, as well as for lower limb surgery with LOR blocks. What you need is local anesthetic drug, syringe, and a needle. You can give this block even with a hypodermic needle or spinal needle in obese patient uh, without spending too much of money. So even if you, if you are thinking of uh, uh, expenses for the patient, it is very low cost and it provides excellent analysis here. So what you need to understand to give an uh, excellent uh, LR block, you need to understand about how to blunt a needle tip when you are using a, a hypodermic or spinal needle. You need to understand the concept of cushion effect and you need to understand how to fill bounce and pops in the uh, LR technique. So needles you can use, you can use tohi needle, you can use pencil point spinal needle, uh, you can use uh, conventional block needle, but all these options are expensive. So you can use hypodermic needle as well. Or in case of obese patient, you can use simple spinal needle. 
So for using the spinal needle or hypodermic needle, you need to blunt the needle tip because uh, when you insert the needle to, to the facial pains and the muscles, if your needle tip is sharp, then you will not feel these pops and bounce and the loss of resistance. But if you make your needle tip blunt, you can easily feel those bounce and pops and loss of resistance and you can deposit the drug in the right plane. So how to blunt the needle tip? This is the simple trick. This is the 18 gauge needle, this 21 gauge needle. I want to use 21 gauge needle. So I'm uh, rubbing the uh, uh, 20, uh, 21 gauge needle inside the 18 gauge hypodermic needle and it will make the tip of the uh, 18, uh, 21 gauge needle blunt and you can use this needle. Other technique is, uh, this is local this is bowel, anesthetic local bowel, anesthetic uh, that, uh, which is uh, uh, yeah, you, uh, sterile bowel. So I will hit the needle tip uh, two to three times inside the bowel and it will make my needle tip blunt. So here you can see I'm palpating with the, um, my uh, glove, um, my hand that the needle tip is blunt or not. So this is a very easy technique by which you can blunt the needle tip. So what is the concept of cushion effect? It was described in lit literature in 2011 by Dr. Shivkumar Singh and Dr. William uh, uh, Kuruba. It is a very important concept. If you understand this concept, uh, then you, it is very easy to deposit the drug in the right plane. So uh, when you insert the needle uh, to, in the skin, uh, you are, as you are using blunt tip needle, when you insert the needle in, uh, through the skin, you will feel the resistance. So when you, uh, feel, uh, when you are feeling the resisting, you will apply more pressure. And when you apply pressure, your subcutaneous tissue will get compressed. And when your subcutaneous tissue get compressed, and if you apply more pressure, suddenly a needle will give away and you will go through the muscle as well as through the fascia uh, without feeling the pops. So because of uh, uh, extra force, because of this cushion effect, uh, you will see that uh, you will miss the first pop of the uh, fast facial plane. So how to uh, uh, get away from this uh, uh, effect? So to, to prevent cushion effect, uh, this is a simple technique. You have to insert the needle at the angle of 30 to 40 degree. So when you insert the needle th uh, through the skin at the uh, 20, 30, 40 degree angle, uh, then you make the uh, uh, syringe perpendicular to the skin. Then you advance the needle towards the facial plane. When you feel the resistance or when you feel the bounce, you feel the bounce of the uh, syringe and then fill the pop and advance the needle to the next facial layer. So this is how you can feel the pop uh, uh, by preventing the cushion effect. Uh, when, you, when you sleep on the cushion, it will compress, your head will compress the cushion and your uh, cotton inside will be compressed. Just like that, your fat will be compressed because of extra pressure applied by blunt tip needle. So it is easy to miss the first pop. Uh, but if you use this technique, uh, you will feel the first pop also and you will in the right plane. Other methods are you can make an incision in the skin so that uh, it, there won't be any resistance while you, you are piercing the skin. You can um, make the incision either with a larger gauge needle like 18 gauge needle or with a, a stab knife to prevent this, this cushion effect. Uh, you can use needle through needle technique. You can use pencil point needle where outer needle has a sharper tip. So you insert the needle through the skin then you insert the blunt tip needle through the uh, needle and then you feel the pop. Or you can withdraw the needle up to skin after in initial in insertion. So, so you insert the needle, uh, then withdraw back up to the skin, then feel the pop again uh, so that you are in the right plane. Feeling of bounce and pops. As I said, when you insert the needle here you, uh, in this video, you will see here I'm going to the, this is step block, external oblique fascia. I am feeling the bounce of the external oblique fascia. Then I will, feeling, I will feel the bounce of internal oblique fascia uh, and then pop. Once I feel the pop, I will deposit the drug. So here you can see I'm depositing the drug between the internal oblique and transfer abdominis muscle. So it is important to feel the bounce as shown in this video. 
So feel the bounce of the fascia, then only go for the pop. So feel bounce, bounce, bounce and pop. Then feel the bounce, bounce and pop. So if you feel like this, you won't miss any fascian there. So it is uh, important to feel this bounce and pops to deposit the drug in the right plane. Uh, um, most important part of facial plane blocks is that these blocks are part of multimodal analgesia. Like if you are using PEX block or TAP block or rectus sheet block, they won't provide uh, uh, visceral pain relief. So uh, this should be used as a part of multimodal analgesia. They will cover the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, somatic pain, but not visceral pain. So you have to uh, add uh, other analgesic like tramadol or paracetamol or diclofenac to co provide complete analgesia to the patient. Uh, another important point is these are high volume block. Like if you are giving tap block for LSCS, you have to deposit 20, 20 ml on the both side. If you are using for uh, uh, laparotomy, you have to give bilateral tap and bilateral rectorship. Here you require 70 ml of LA. So you have, you have to reduce the concentration of the drug. Uh, same way, if you are giving fascia iliac compartment block, you have to give 30, 40 ml when you are giving with LOR techniques to uh, get good effect. Uh, in PEX1, PEX2 or PEX1 along with SEP block, you require 40, 50 ml of uh, volume. So all, in all these uh, blocks, you require higher volume. So you have to reduce the concentration to make the uh, volume higher. So you have to calculate the toxic dose of the drug. Then only you take the drug and dilute according to your requirement. So this is very important when you are giving facial pain blocks. Uh, and if you un under understand the concept, success rate is very good, uh, like shown here. This is my data. You can see I'm giving almost 30-40% uh, of the block with LOR technique and you can see success rate is very good. Uh, same way, if you look at the country data, almost 75% of the block are uh, with, uh, this is from uh, uh, RNDF uh, where many uh, anesthetists are uh, uh, filling up the data and you can see the country data that 75% of the blocks are with landmark technique only and success, success rate is also very high. So uh, LOR blocks are important and success rate is also very good if you understand the concept properly. Uh, this is my website uh, that is anesthesia learning. Uh, you can find it uh, on uh, Google. And uh, the, uh, as you know, this is my YouTube channel. S subscribe to it so that you, you don't miss any videos. Thank you. Thank you very much.